How you doing, y'all? Welcome to Confidence. On today's episode, I'm pissed off at the law of detachment. I actually, I believe in it, but I don't think that it's really taught right. Because I think what people do, I see these like manifestation coaches and all these people online, and all they do is kind of just shout it out at you like, detach yourself, detach. But how do you actually detach yourself? That's really the question. Because I think a lot of people, we hear it in spirit, but we don't know actually how to do that. So I'm going to really get, I'm going to deep dive some actual steps on how to detach yourself from the outcomes and the people in your life. I've got two questions. Uh, one question, some girl asked me about she any tips for dating. She wants to find a family or she wants a family. She wants a husband. Um, she's 28, but she can't seem to find that. So we're going to get into that. Also, somebody asked me a question about, some girl asked me a question about, getting rid of her ex, but not really. She really, she's in love with him, but the ex can't seem to let her go. Something apparently happened. We're going to get into it. it, it it's going to be a whole thing. So we've got a full slate on tap. Uh, let's just have some fun. Let's get into it. So first things first, um, you know, I was watching like TikTok or Instagram, whatever. And I, I just seen this like one video and it, it just like brought something up in my mind about how like big, law of detachment really is, right? And it's just like shouted out online. And I was like, you know, I understand. And I think most of us, right? Like the amount that we probably hear that phrase, like that phrase, right? Like, oh, just detach, just detach. I'm like, you know, I, I understand that. And here's the thing. I think that really is the ultimate goal, but you can't just detach by saying it to yourself. And I've done that. Don't get me wrong, right? Like one of my affirmations is detached from the outcomes. The results don't matter. But here's the thing. For a very long time in my life, I've known this information. And I think for you too, right? It's like we all know that we need to de quote unquote detach from the outcomes. But what happens? Habitually, we get back into our emotions, our feelings, comparing ourselves. It's only a matter of time before the quote unquote attachment starts to come back. And, and I think that's a really important piece of this is like, you know, some people, I, I swear, like, I, I feel like I read this online. Somebody was like, I don't really care about anything that happens to me because I'm completely unattached to everything. And I'm like, is that really real? Is that really real? Because it doesn't seem real to me. That doesn't seem human to me because we all have feelings and things happen, right? Serious things happen. You know, maybe you lose your job or like I said, whatever, a relationship. And it's not very easy to just mentally tell yourself, oh, well, I'm just detached from it. It doesn't matter anymore. That's not really how it works. There needs to be some sort of process and some sort of understanding. And honestly, it's funny because I feel like it's something that I've been really trying to work on in my life in general, right? I mean, think about how long I've been talking about my job for probably about like a year. You know what I'm saying? Maybe even more. Anybody that's known me for the last like four years knows how I am, which is like, I'm fucking attached to the outcomes of my work, right? We get attached to the views. We get attached to the likes. We get attached to people. We get attached to so much fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? Why would this be such a fucking huge thing if we weren't getting attached? We all get attached. But I think I'm really starting to understand how to break out of that. Truly, I actually, I'm feeling that way. And I'm not sitting here saying that I can't get attached to something again. But what I'm recognizing is there is a way to actually start to disintegrate whatever attachment it is in your life. But here's the first step. First step is this. You got to take complete responsibility for your life. Last podcast, I was talking about how no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to save you from your misery. No one's coming to save you from your bullshit. So that is step number one is complete and total responsibility for your life and the outcomes of your life. But here's the other thing. Once you take all this responsibility, here's what I've recognized what happens sometimes. And this is the trap that I feel like I've kind of got myself into about this. Sometimes when we talk about like detaching or again, you're going through a really hard time. What I find is, is like you could become very introspective and that's what happens to me, right? It's like, you, you, you know, you go through some sort of hard time or whatever it is and you really start to try to figure out what the problem is. And, and that's really the issue is that you're focusing so hard on the problem. And, and I think that's what's really law of detachment in itself, right? If the idea should be, we have to let go of the problem, quote unquote. 
And when I'm talking about the problem, I'm talking about like whatever guilt you're holding on to about what you did in this situation or the circumstances of whatever you're going through. You have to really look at it and say, okay, accept it, right? And, and I'm accept it in two ways. Number one, it's my responsibility to get out of this hole. And number two, I accept the fact that things happened <laughs> and I'm in this position. What, whether I, whatever the fuck I did, it doesn't really fucking matter. I'm here right now. That's it. And you got to get really into the present. And then what you need to start doing is looking towards the future. So here's the thing. The reason I think we get so attached to something is, and this is just like, I think like scientific in a way, right? So like what we hold in mind, right? Our thoughts, our feelings, those are the things that we're going to continue to keep running on and running on and running on, right? Your neural pathways in your brain. If you're talking to somebody for a very long time, right? Let's say it's your best friend or your ex. We're going to probably get into that later in the podcast too. But the thing is, they are so ingrained in your mind to think about them, to think about how they're feeling, to talk to them, that in order to actually, quote unquote, detach yourself or change the way that you're feeling and you're thinking, it's going to take hard work. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Detachment is not easy. And it's not as simple as saying, oh, you just don't care anymore. That's not how it works. Because that person, that motherfucker is ingrained into your brain. Not joking, literally imprinted. And if it's in your emotions and it's how you feel, guess what? That's that's the thoughts that are going to come up in your head, right? So let's say you have this strong attachment to somebody. Emotionally, you're invested. And emotionally, you're probably attached to that person. When you're emotionally invested into somebody, what happens? Your body has feelings. And with those feelings comes thoughts, right? So if I have these feelings, I'm going to get these thoughts. And these thoughts are telling me, oh, I miss them. What are they doing? What are they up to? And think about this. If I wake up every single day and I don't actually make any sort of effort to try to change my thoughts or go beyond my feelings, I'm never actually going to change and I'm never actually going to detach. So again, if you're that person that's you're emotionally invested into somebody and you're sitting there and you're like watching a TikTok video and they're like, just don't care. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I'm telling you it's not going to work. There needs to be a lot of deep, uncomfortable work that you need to do. And what I mean by that is this. It's a strong awareness and recognition of your feelings and your emotions and then having the ability to try to pepper your mind with new thoughts and new beliefs and new actions. And this is how you genuinely detach what you need to do is somehow replace those emotions that you're feeling about that person with something greater, right? A different emotion. And here's the thing. Those emotions of attachment are usually tied to like competitiveness or lust or some of these negative emotions that put you in fight or flight. They put you in these like negative states of being. And then the problem is, is your body gets addicted to that. That's what I'm trying to say. What, what you feel in your body does not actually change because if you don't actually change it yourself, you know what I'm saying? If you wake up every single day and you're doing the same things every day, you're going to the same job, you're talking to the same people, you're not reading any books, you're not listening to any podcasts, you're not changing you know, your circumstances, your actions, your environment, you're going to feel the same feelings for a very, very, very long time. You're going to stay attached. So my point is, we need to replace that negative emotion, right, that attachment that you have with something that is more positive and probably more aligned to your goals and what you really want in your life. And I think that's generally how you do this, right? You want to truly detach from somebody. You have to change the underlying feelings that you're having, but the only way to change the feelings that you're having is to replace the negative feeling with a more positive feeling. And it's got to be something that you can work towards. And this is the hard part. All right, let's say hypothetically you're attached to a person. It's very difficult. And, and this is why I think, oh, one, one quick caveat. I think this is why for a lot of people, and I would say more, I would say, well, I would say all genders. The reason that so many people are attached to somebody until they find somebody else is because Again, you don't actually replace that underlying emotion until you have something else to replace it with. And that's kind of why a lot of people get stuck. Number one, they just don't find somebody else 
or they're just so deeply that that person is so deeply embedded or embedded into their emotions that they can't. But again, think about anybody you've ever detached yourself from, quote unquote, right? Think about any of your exes that maybe, you know, you were chasing for a very long time, but then, you know, all of a sudden you let them go and then they came back to you, right? Oh, they always come back. Think about that. The only way that you actually probably got past that person for a lot of people is you found somebody new or you found something better. You get what I'm saying? To replace that feeling and attachment that you had. Now you have a new one. <laughs> now you have another person that you could chase after and, you know, lust after and, you know, share your baggage with. But but here's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so take that, right? But how do we detach to me in the healthiest way? And this is where we're at, right? So, okay, let's just take my circumstance, right? I don't want to just replace my my underlying emotions for just another person, right? Because what happens is, is we don't actually get out of the cycle, which is I'm just attaching myself to new person, to new person, to new person. If we truly want to detach and be in our own energy consistently, I think what we need to do is we need to detach ourselves from our negative underlying emotions to something positive that is not a person. Or not a thing, right? So the other thing too is what a lot of men do is this, right? So let's just say, I'll look at it two different ways. I feel like women detach themselves from people by replacing that person with another guy. And a lot of guys do that too, but they, I think it ends up taking a shit. Uh, but then I feel like for men, it's different. I feel like the way that men usually detach themselves from a poor situation or a poor relationship is actually through work. And it's actually through achievement. And here's the thing. I think both avenues, it, the problem is, is the problem actually never truly goes away. You're really just filling a void, right? So you're not actually detaching yourself from that person. You're just replacing it with something else. And guess what? When the next person comes into your life, right? Let's say for a man, right? He does all this achieving, right? And he feels better about himself, the next time some girl comes into his life, the problem still is there because what's going to happen is he's going to give up on all the achieving and then he's going to go back and attach himself to the next person that he, he meets. So he never actually finds true happiness and fulfillment within himself. And the same thing with the woman. The problem is you detach yourself from the previous person by going to the next one and maybe you know it's good for a little while, but then usually you run into the same problems. You end up attached to a new guy. And again, you're not happy and fulfilled within yourself. So truly in both situations, and, and uh, to me, a lot of the detachment that people go through, to me, what they're doing is they're replacing the attachment with other attachments. And again, to me, that is also not detachment. It's also not detachment. Now, again, this goes back to this whole thing, which is I think as human beings, it's hard for us not to get attached. We care. We do have feelings. We are human. So, but, but how do we overcome this? You know what I'm saying? Again, we're now seeing the pitfalls that people go through, uh, but how do we overcome this? So obviously, again, we have this negative underlying emotion, these feelings that we're trying to move past. It's a person, it's a thing, whatever. I think what we need to do is we need to create something for ourselves and it's got to be really well-rounded. You get what I'm saying? It can't just be one thing, one new thing that comes and replaces that. And what I mean by that is I want you to create such a clear picture of what you want to create in your life. And we need to start associating really, really, really positive emotions towards those things. And to me, it's got to be a well-rounded amount of things. So for instance, I'm just going to use my situation, right? I think the reason that right now I have been feeling really fucking good and I feel like I'm back. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm back in my mojo. Now, don't get me wrong. I still have my days, right? Where it's a little bit down, but generally speaking, I'm like, whoa, like I feel confident. I don't have any of the things, the, the results, but what I realize I'm, I'm gaining back very quickly is my mindset and my energy. And I think the reason that I'm getting it back without replacing the person, like for instance, I'm not talking to no girls. I mean, I have a little bit of flings here and there. You know what I'm saying? I got a little bit of flirt going on. Uh, you know, I have some people. 
But generally speaking, I'm keeping romantic connections at a distance right now, and I'm really focusing on friendship. But here's the other thing, too. The pitfall that I feel like I was running into very quickly after this whole situation was... I then started getting attached to my work again. Like, oh, I just need to achieve. I need to achieve. If I just get more followers and more money, I will be happier. No, 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 no. I recognize, no, no, no. I just need more perspective. Actually, I need to slow down. Actually, I need to not invest too much into my work because number one, I'm not being truly creative then. And here's what happened. I feel like I've been, I began to detach myself by inspiring myself with positive emotions towards a beautiful future and a, and a fulfilling large future. And what I mean by that is this, I'm dreaming of, wow, like I know I'm going to meet a girl that is fire, that gets my sense of humor, that like is going to push me and is going to be my perfect compliment. I know it's coming. I know I'm going to reach the heights I want to and work intentionally. I want to impact millions of people. I know that. And guess what? I know it's going to happen, right? I'm building this beautiful picture for myself. And on top of that too, what else do I want, right? Friendships, social circle. I want to be able to enjoy daily life with multiple different people. And I want to be a light for people and an energy for people that they can see, feel, and just be attracted to. And what I'm doing is, is I'm just continually peppering my mind, whether it's through manifestation, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through journaling, whether it's through affirmations, whether it's through goal setting, whether it's through a walk and contemplation. It doesn't matter what the modality is. But what you really need to do is continually pepper your mind with the, the beautiful life that you are trying to create and, and power it with positive emotions. And you need to calm your nervous system down because that's what I've recognized was also happening too in this. When, when you're attached to something, what I'm recognizing is you are living in a state of fight or flight. You were living in a state of these negative emotions that are making you want to control all the different outcomes, but it's because you're fucking scared and you're operating from this place of fear, not from this place of calm and confidence. But in order to get to that place of calm and confidence and slow your nervous system down, you need to slow yourself down. But that's what I'm trying to say is that in general, we have to let go of, you know, again, filling the void with just other people and start to be more patient. I think that's the biggest thing I learned about detachment is letting go of the aspect of time. No more rushing. No more. Let that shit go immediately now, today. Concept of time, throw it out. Your age, throw it out. Honestly, stop counting birthdays. <laughs> Dead ass. It doesn't even matter. Right now, we're just in this present moment right here, me and you, experience this right here. That's all we need to do. And so that's what I've really been focusing on is just creating that really beautiful picture for myself, inspiring that feeling, that emotion towards that goal. And what happens? The underlying negative emotions start to dissipate. I begin to detach myself. I believe in myself and everybody's a mirror, right? If I have my own self-belief about where I'm going and what I'm going to find, people are going to see that and they're going to feel that. And that's what you need to recognize about yourself is if you're in this fight or flight or you're in this deep attachment towards somebody or something, you need to start restructuring your beliefs. You need to start restructuring your life and set some goals you want to talk about focusing on yourself? I think this is what we're talking about. Is not getting the value of yourself from the outer circumstances. And again, to me, that's what Law Tide Roy, oh, you know, you're not getting the value of yourself from the, the results, which is true, which is true. But again, I don't, I think you're going to get back into those negative emotions until you start to recognize. Like, it is going to be a little bit uncomfortable to think positively. 
it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable to take action on those things that you genuinely want in your life. Because right now, if you are in a cycle, right, habitually, now I'll give you my example just because I know it so well, right? Let's say I have this negative emotion that I'm feeling. I'm like, wow, you know, I lost this person in my life, right? And what was I doing? I was continually focusing on the loss. And right, I have this underlying feeling. So what happens? My body is telling my mind, you're sad. You should feel bad. Compare yourself, you know, have all these negative emotions. Think about this. How can I create a TikTok if that's what's happening up here? You get what I'm saying? In my body, if I've got these negative underlying feelings, if you're a creative person, this is huge for you. You cannot create from a place like that. You cannot create from a place of fight or flight where your nervous system is being compromised. What you need to do is take some time and focus on calming that down. And that's what I've really, that's what I'm trying to tell you about the, the deep focus on creating those positive, energetic emotions. And the way that we do that is we build the big picture, we set the goals, we take ultimate responsibility that it, we can do this. We overcome our feelings, right? Those negative emotions that are telling us to think these things. And instead, what we do is we take action towards our purpose, right? I spend time with friends. I went to fucking volleyball. There, and I know this sounds like remedial or small, but there is a voice in my head that was like, oh, you know, you don't really know these people. Like, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, why don't you just go home and sulk instead? Why don't you just go home and... and you know, fucking scroll on Instagram or some bullshit. But that's the discomfort that you need to overcome. The discomfort that you need to overcome in detachment is taking actions that are beneficial to your ultimate purpose and your ultimate goal that you don't feel like doing. That is how you detach yourself. You detach yourself by when you get into those feelings, you go and you rise above those feelings and you say, no, I, I am going to find what I'm looking for. Yes, you know what? I'm going to recognize these feelings. I recognize them and I'm going to say, okay, I accept that. I'm not going to sit here and deny them. But I'm going to say, what can I do to overcome this? Where else can I focus my attention or my energy? And like I said, for me, it was, all right, taking some risks, going to volleyball, doing these little different things. You know, in the moment, it was hard for me to get there. But once I went and I came back, I'm like, yo, life is incredible. And, and that's what I'm saying. Just having the ability to be in the present and calm yourself down. You are going to get to a state where you truly detach yourself from that attachment. But it takes a lot of work. And I hope that you understand what I'm saying. Is that it's not a very comfortable process, especially at the start. It gets easier. I will say that it gets so much easier. Like now every single day, it's like, woo, I feel like I'm in this flow state, right? I'm just like, if I ever get that feeling underneath, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? There's like worry or anxiety. I'm like, that's not the emotions that I want to feel. I recognize it for two seconds and I, and I use one of my modalities, right? I meditate for half a second. I picture my future. I visualize my future. I pepper my mind with positive books, with, with positive self-talk. And that's the work. That is the work of detachment right there, is getting uncomfortable within yourself and your own thoughts and, and not distracting yourself. Here's the thing, too. When I, you know, was, uh, you know, first going through the situation, I was actually smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Uh, to, you know, break up cigarettes. Everybody, hey, it is what it is. I haven't smoked any in like five, six days, whatever. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. You, I think naturally, it might be hard to not do certain things, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like little things, like you know, I had a couple cigarettes, or like you know, I'll flirt with a girl here and there because I'm like, ah, it feels good to just talk to somebody. But generally, I want you to take a step back from the distractions. That's the other thing too that's really hard to do when you're trying to detach yourself in the healthiest way. Is you got to recognize when something is is purely not within your ultimate vision or your ultimate goal, because that's what I think happens. Is you have this clear picture of what you want to create, right? So I talk to you guys about, I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to find this girl. That's my perfect compliment. You know, gym girl, sense of humor, all the great things. Like I know it's coming. 
and I know I'm going to build a great friends and I know my business is going to flourish and it's going to be there. But what happens is let's say there's a girl that like, for instance, there's like a girl that like hit me up and I'm like, I know she's not the final picture. But what happens is, is if you're going through a time where you're feeling negative, what do you do? It's very easy to just say, nah, I'll just flirt with you instead. You know, I'll just spend some time flirting with you. And you know what? This actually helps me avoid my feelings. You get what I'm saying? When, when I'm thinking about detaching, again, when I think people like detach themselves, it's almost like they think, oh, I got to distract myself. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not distracting yourself. It's not filling the void with somebody else or s achievement or, or, or outside aims. It's how do I build that mental fortitude within myself? How do I trust myself? And it's so, let me tell you something. It is so hard to trust and believe in yourself when you have just gotten a negative result. That's the hardest part. How do I turn around and tell you that I believe that there is going to be this beautiful fucking amazing person that is coming for me if I feel like I had this opportunity at all. I didn't get it. But the truth of the matter is this. You got to have that self-belief. There's no choice. The other option is you can sit there, sulk, continue to be in that habitual emotion and sit there and lay over and die. But I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to create something beautiful for yourself. I, and here's the thing too. It's like each setback is just an opportunity for you to look at the field. It knocks down your ego. And that's the perfect time to look into the field and say, what do I really want to create? Think about when you lose your job. A lot of people like look at that like, oh, I lost my job. I'm like, what? Best thing. That's fucking awesome. Congratulations. Because it's the only time that you actually get uncomfortable to make a change for yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Some people will stay in a shit job because it's paying them the bills. But until they actually get knocked down, right? Until they actually get lose the then they're like, oh, fuck. This isn't what I want to be doing. Right? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. These moments are, are great opportunities. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm on the tail end of it where, where now I'm like, whoa, I'm in the midst of creating something incredible and beautiful. And I'm recognizing that true detachment in my mind comes from, first off, I think you need to have multiple areas of your life that bring you fulfillment and also finding fulfillment and gratitude for every single moment on earth, no matter the circumstance. And, and whether it is good or bad, it does not matter. It's, it's all about how you perceive it. Every single thing that ever happens to you, you have no idea why it's happening. It could look bad in the moment, but maybe it's not. And I'm here to tell you it's not. I'm here to tell you that everything happens for a reason. And I know as corny as shit. But, but that's the belief that you need to have and, and watch the results and, and the happiness and the fulfillment of your life rapidly change. So here's the next step. The next step is just find beauty in the process of it too. That's it. Create a process for yourself, set some goals and just enjoy the ride and just recognize that. All right. Everything is happening for me. The universe is conspiring for you. But here's the thing. This is why I'm a little skeptical when I say that. It takes the work on you. It takes you having the consciousness to decide that you want something better. You have to decide. You have to take action on those things that bring you meaning and find joy from just the process of that. That's how you detach. That's how you create a fulfilling, beautiful life for yourself. It's not just a blind affirmation. It's work. It's getting uncomfortable. It's getting out of your routine. It's doing something different. It's waking up and telling yourself, yo, today, I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about my future. I'm going to create my future today, and I'm going to fucking love every second of it. And if you do that, think about this. If you think this 
every day, right? Let's say you're listening to this podcast right now. Imagine you listen to this podcast every morning, every morning, every morning. You recognize how different you would start every day. And you then you'd be creating new neural pathways in your fucking brain where you are going to wake up every single fucking day and, and you were going to change your life every single day. But if you wake up and you just, you don't read and you don't meditate and you don't take the time to set yourself up and you just let the day take you away, what the fuck is going to happen? What the fuck is going to happen? You're going to be pulled in like the tide. Negative emotion is going to show back up because your body's addicted to it. You're not going to get above your feelings. Get above your feelings. Live above that. Live above your body. Take control of your life. And you do that by peppering your mind constantly with this shit. Getting up, doing the uncomfortable shit, saying yes to the risky shit, looking at your life and, and fucking loving it. Finding happiness in the present moment of everything that you're fucking doing. Beautiful things are coming for you. You need to believe that though. It, and again, you want to believe that? Guess what? It's not just by me telling you it. It's by you fucking making yourself believe it. Make yourself believe it. And how do we change our beliefs? We get uncomfortable. We read books. We listen to podcasts. We fucking journal. We look at the things that we want to do and we take intentional action towards that purpose. I don't want to hear that you're feeling like shit or you're attached to somebody or blah, 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 blah. And if I look at your life and you're not getting good sleep, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not pushing yourself towards the things that you care about. I don't want to fucking hear it. To keep it real, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking care. Because you're not trying. And there's no such thing as try. You either do or you don't. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Make the choice. Do it. Let it go. Do something for your future. Set yourself up. Don't get fucking bogged down by the distractions. Have good boundaries with your time and your energy. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You, you want to go to the, to the fucking other person and, and fill the void? Go ahead. You want to go to the next job that just pays you the same and it, you, know, you make no change? Listen, I don't give a fuck. To keep it a million, I don't care. You got a choice every single day. No person should stop you. No attachment should stop you from living a fulfilling life. That's what I'm saying. Anything that you say where, oh, and I get it because uh, here's the thing. I don't want to sit here and say, you know, you can't have negative emotions. You can't have bad feelings. You can have bad feelings, but, but you got to put in the work to get rid of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Law of detachment. What it really comes down to is change your feelings. How do you change your feelings? You change your thoughts. You change your actions. You do uncomfortable shit that you weren't doing yesterday because the shit you're doing right now is not fucking working. If you're feeling like that every day, it's not working. Something's wrong. Change it. But do it. Do it. Manifest what you want. Set the intention. Enjoy the fucking moment and get to work. You're going to find whatever you want. We could create whatever the fuck we want in this life. That's the truth. That's what humans are. That's what our fucking frontal lobe is for. We get to imagine something and we fucking bring it into the universe. We're all fucking God, believe it or not. It's the truth. We were created through him, right? And what is God? He created us. And what did God create us to do? Fucking create. So fucking create. You want a beautiful relationship? Create it. Create it. What excuse do you have? Have you been reading the books? Have you been taking risks? Have you been going outside of your comfort zone? Or are you sitting there sulking about somebody that is not showing up for you? It's only a reflection of the way that you feel about yourself. It's only a reflection of your inner thoughts about yourself and how worthy you are. If you believe that you are going to find what you're looking for, guess what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen. It's the only way it's going to happen, actually. Believe it or not. If, if you play this game, and I'm talking about life, relationships, not to lose, you will never win. You will never win. You need to play to win. You need to believe in yourself. Think about all the shit you've done in your life. You're telling me you haven't created some crazy shit in your life. I guarantee you, every single person I've ever coached, 
that everybody has at least one story. And there's one that comes to my mind from one of my coaches. This woman was in $15,000 of credit card debt, working at a shit job. And I asked her and I said, hey, during that time, how did you feel? Ah, oh, you know, I I felt hopeless. I was like, I, I thought to myself, I'd never get out of this. And I asked her, you know, because we're working on the dating part. And I was like, so where are you at now? Like, no, I, I mean, I love my job. I'm crushing it. She's obviously uh, investing in her coaching with me. And I'm like, think about that. Th there were feelings of hopelessness. There were feelings that what you wanted wasn't going to be there and you fucking did it anyways. What did Nelson Mandela say? Everything's impossible until it's done. My whole point is it's all the way that you believe. If you believe you deserve more, you're going to get more. Your expectations create your reality. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You want to d detach from, <laughs> I know we've, we've gotten a long way from a detachment. But, but the key is also too is this. Yes, the results of those things are nice. You know what I'm saying? Getting a beautiful relationship or making a fuck ton of money or be, being famous or whatever the fuck it is. But the truth is, is what are, what are, we, what are we thinking that all is going to bring us? Fulfillment, happiness. Guess what? You could be happy right now. But again, if you want the feelings of happiness, you want the feelings of fulfillment, it starts by setting those goals and getting after it. And that's how you build the self-esteem. And that's how you don't let setbacks bother you because you feel like you're in control. And sometimes you're going to get knocked down and that's okay. That's what I'm saying. Law of detachment, like I get it, but there's times where you get attached to shit. It happens. Sorry. You get attached to shit. But it's how can you relinquish that attachment, replace the emotion, we replace the emotion by invigorating ourselves with really positive self-belief that we can achieve the things that we want to, we start to try to achieve those things, we get some fucking results, and we feel good about ourselves. And then you let go of the bullshit that was holding you back in the first place. And you say, thank you. You say, fucking thank you. I'm grateful for, for setting me back because I needed that. I needed that. I needed you to fucking hold on to me. I needed you to let go of me. Because it reinforced that I can do this shit. I don't know where this all came from. I guess I'm a motivational motherfucking speaker. Maybe I should get on a stage and do this shit one day. But let's go. Rise above. Rise above. That's it. It's go time. It's go time. And that's what I'm trying to say. You want to feel like I'm feeling right now? Do the work. Put the time in. Stop being so introspective and find some joy in, in the process and in the world and start experiencing it. Go help somebody else today. Get off your ass. Do something different. Jump off a bridge. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to shake it up. All right. Let's get into the questions. Um... I'll try to make them quick or brief. I don't fucking know. Who even knows? Maybe I repeated myself 20 fucking times. And guess what? I I don't give a single fuck. Okay. Um, the question of the day. There's two of them. Uh, but let me go with the one that I liked. This was good. I'm 28 years old, still looking for someone who is willing to put in the work for a relationship. Any tips? I guess my age scares me a bit. My goal is to get married and have a family. I mean, if you just listen to the first part of this, this is all, it's all self-belief. It's all self-belief. Is it not? First off, what? get off the fucking timeline. Get off the timeline. Oh, I'm 28 years old. My age scares me. Why? Why? That fear is going to keep you away from your goal. Because what happens? If your age scares you, what happens? We're going to have a scarcity mindset. We're going to put up with shit that we normally wouldn't put up with because we're scared we're not going to get the goal. And that's what happens to a lot of you. Again, this is what we're talking about. You take the shortcut, which is, let's say you meet somebody and let's say hypothetically in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm 28. I want a family. I'm fucking scared, right? I'm not going to get it. You meet this guy. Actually, he has a lot of good qualities. He's really cool. 
you spend time with him, you go on some dates, things are going well. Ah, you know what? Some things start to, uh, guess what? There's a little bit of a red flag here. He doesn't fulfill this non-negotiable. Ah, but he's still cool and he's showing up. Ah, you know what? I'm 28 and like, let's just, let's just see it through. Let's just keep pushing. All right, I'm going to keep trying. All right, now homie's really not showing up. Like, things have really changed dramatically. Ah, now I'm fucking stuck with this guy. Uh, A year or two goes by. You're going back and forth. You're hot and you're cold. Nothing's working. Why did we get stuck? You just wasted another year or two, six months, eight months, 12 months, two years, three years, just because you were scared. Because you were scared that if I don't, Chop it down now that it's not going to happen for me. And I guess this was the biggest thing I was talking about with detachment. The biggest key detachment to detachment is fucking patience. You want to detach yourself? Learn to wait. Learn to be still. Learn to be disciplined to letting go of the timeline of anything. Because that's where you're getting stuck. Is everybody feels like it needs to happen right now, right now, right now. If I don't have the feeling that I want right now, right now, right now, it's not going to happen. But that's not how it works. Actually, you get it quicker by letting it go and not getting on the timeline and actually just focusing on the process. So now let's say we take the same girl, same situation, right? And let's just say hypothetically, we don't have a fear about our age. What will, if we are process focused, right? What would we do in this situation? Ah, well, I know I spent four months with this guy and I knew he was cool at the beginning, but if he's not aligned to me, then that's it. Like, what am I going to do? I got got to try to find somebody else that I'm aligned with because in the process, I'm recognizing the best thing for me is that I got to be strict with my boundaries and my non-negotiables because if you're not, you're just going to pay for it later. And here's the thing. I'm not sitting here and saying that a great relationship doesn't take commitment because it does. It really does. But what you need to do is find somebody that is willing to like communicate well and show up for you and, and put in the work. And, and you got to tell by the actions that they're giving you. You get what I'm saying? And it's very hard to do that when you have your own underlying fear. When you're afraid of the timeline, it's very difficult for you to discern what is good for you and what is not and what is authentic to you and what is not. Take my situation with work. When I'm like, I got to be famous today. What happens? Oh, I'm looking at the numbers and I'm scared. Now I'm, I'm creating from this place of what? Fight or flight, right? My emotions are running rampant. I'm not showing up correct. My results are sucking. I'm now feeling worse about myself. Now that I'm feeling worse about myself, I, I, the fight or flight is kicking in more and more and more. Woo. Take a step back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax. Even if you have a bad day, even if you have a setback, it's okay, Right? intentionally you're going to get to where you want to go, but it's about patience and it's about trust, right? Trust that it's going to work out over the long run. Trust that, okay, maybe if I'm a little bit more patient in this situation, things will change. But it all starts with that belief. And again, which belief are you operating from? Think about that. Ask yourself that. Are you operating from a place of negative emotions and fear? Because you're not going to get great results that way. So the first tip I would say to this person, right? She's like, okay, any tips on how to find that? Let's just say hypothetically you're completely single. And so this is things I work on with like my coachee specifically, right? Is like number one, your beliefs, right? This is what we go through. One of the first things that we go through, two, well, two things. Number one, we we look at our relationship patterns, right? Where are the places that I could show up better? We honestly, if you listen to the last three or four podcasts, I've kind of gone through a lot of this with you right? I went back and I said, okay, what are my negative patterns that I'm showing up with? Because if I don't recognize my patterns, I can't communicate that to my next partner. And I'm actually going to destroy my relationship because I do have negative things about the ways that I show up in relationships. And I need to be self-aware about what they are. And I actually need to communicate that to my partner. So my partner's not very thrown off. So for instance, if it's me, right? 
if I meet this next girl, right, this girl that I'm going to meet that's super fucking beautiful and all the things that I want because I know it's coming, I'm going to have to communicate to her and say, hey, listen, uh, just to let you know, like, yes, I could be a little bit avoidant at times. So sometimes when things get hard, I sometimes I have a tendency to run. I'm just letting you know, like, I'm working on that really strongly and I just want you to be patient with me in those times. All right. Hey, this is good. Now they understand. Now they could treat me a little bit better, right? Now they could understand how to treat me better. So I would say first tip, understand what your patterns are. Second thing is your beliefs. To me, this is critical. If you aren't coming into a relationship believing that you are worthy of one and and subconsciously, right? We're not talking about consciously. A lot of y'all, 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 y'all have an optimistic view of who you are and what relationship you're going to be in. You know what I'm saying? For instance, for me, right? So let's talk for half a second. Um, I could sit here and say optimistically, oh, I just want this perfect partner. Like I want this girl who's all these things, bing, 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 bing. But what do I truly believe underneath? Now that's what we need to get to. Do I feel worthy of that? Do I feel like I could truly receive that? And honestly, I had to do some work on this. I just did an hour meditation on this. And I asked myself, what limiting belief do I want to let go of? And what strong belief do I want to instill in myself? And I said to myself, I want to let go of any belief that I have underneath of feeling unworthy of that beautiful connection. And I want to replace that with, I am worthy of that. I know I'm worthy of that. And here's the thing, we're all worthy of love. We're all, that's, the, that's the craziest thing, is a belief is not right or wrong. Think about this. You, you could have a preference on, and I always tell my coaches this, they're going to love this. Uh, I always ask them in this, in this module of beliefs, I say, do you like spinach? Right? And right now I'm sure listening to this, you'd have an answer. You're like, yeah, I like spinach. Or like, no, I don't like spinach. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, d- is, is liking spinach good or bad inherently? You'd probably turn around and say, mm, not really. It doesn't really matter. It's really just a preference. Now, here's the thing. What is your goal? That's the key, right? What is your goal? Where are you trying to get to? Now, let's say hypothetically, right? I was going to give you a million dollars to eat 20 bowls of spinach. Wouldn't it be better to believe that you like spinach? Probably. And the same thing comes with like beliefs in love and in life. Where's your goal? What do you want? All right, I want this beautiful girl right? I want this amazing girl that shows up, sense of humor, fucking takes care of herself, uh, you know, just supports me, positive, optimistic, fun, all the, all the things. I need to feel genuinely worthy of that underneath, right? My, I have to feel about myself deeply with, with ultimate joy and gratitude that I am worthy of that fucking connection, Right? Because I'm not going to get that. Again, I could optimistically want it on the surface, but if my fear is that I'm unworthy of that, I'm toast. I'm not getting it. So second thing is work on your beliefs, right? Understand what your beliefs are. Again, this is things I help people with. If you're somebody that, you know, needs support when it comes to finding a great relationship, I can help you get in that or just create a fulfilling life for yourself. Honestly, with a lot of people that I coach, it's beyond relationships. It's not, relationships are are an outcome, but it's a subset of how you feel about yourself. Again, we're talking about how every, everything is a mirror towards you and how you believe. So I would say that's the other big thing is work on your beliefs. What do you truly believe about yourself? Do you feel worthy? And if you don't, get coaching. Or you work with somebody. Journal. I don't care what the fuck it is. Again, do the uncomfortable work. This is what we're talking about. And then the other thing too is, is like know what it is that you value, right? Non-negotiables are critical. You got to know what you're looking for. You, you got to visualize what you're looking for. And then you got to have great boundaries and you got to have great worthiness, right? You got to, you got to know where your goal is. See, we're talking about this in its totality. Know where you're going, know what your goal is, set some guidelines for yourself. That's what boundaries really are. Boundaries are like, I'm looking for this and the way for me to get that is this way. So for me, I'm going to just give you my example for me, right? If I know that I'm getting this beautiful girl, that's amazing. Sense of humor. I, you know, I'm going to list it all a million times right? I know that's my goal. My beliefs are in alignment. I feel worthy of that. Where are my boundaries? My boundaries are only spend time with genuine connections. Ding, ding, ding. 
Am I fucking around with fucking 21 year old and just getting a quick bang? No. Now, if she handed it to me, maybe, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like maybe, you know, there's, sometimes you can eat some dessert. You know what I'm saying? You're not always going to be a hundred percent towards your goal. It's like a diet. It's like sometimes you be 80%. But my whole point is boundaries are guides, right? Sometimes you can go over the line a little bit, but you got to reorient yourself back over. <laughs> my whole point is the more that I could have great boundaries around my time and around the the, the focus of where I'm going, uh, the, the better my results are going to be. So for instance, I'm like, okay, I'm only spending time with genuine connections. Great. All right. I'm only dating people or romantically, you know, investing in people that are within my non-negotiables. Great boundary, Chris. Good fucking job, bro. Thanks. Here's the thing though. A lot of people, what it is it? We know what it is that we want. We know the boundaries that we have, but what do we do? We eat the fucking ice cream, right? I Again, you could fill the void. You could distract yourself. I can go right on this, right? I can hang out with some girl that's not all the things that I want and just get an attachment to some dumb fucking person that like just is irrelevant to my whole existence or that doesn't raise me up or isn't optimistic or isn't any of the things that I genuinely want. But again, it all starts with the self-belief underneath, does it not? You got to believe that you could receive that. I'm not stopping myself. I'm not slowing down. And honestly, what happens is, is when you have giant goals in the ways that I do, like I dream fucking big. You know what I'm saying? I dream big. I'm not scared to dream big because I know I'm capable. It, life will never give you something that you don't want. That's, that's, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> in the end, in the end, this is my point. Life, if you authentically, like let's say hypothetically, your dream is you really want a fucking husband, right? That's what you're saying. You want a family. Guess what? You're going to find it at some point. You're going to find it. Now, again, do I feel like you have to have the belief underneath? Like I'm saying that to you, but I'm like, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Because if you truly believe that and you work on that belief, right, you will find it. But you have to believe it. And you've got to put in the work, the uncomfortable work to believe that thing. And it starts by doing some of the outer actions first. You know what I'm saying? In order to strengthen that self-belief, sometimes you just got to follow your boundaries. So for instance, right? So I'm sitting here saying, we also want to strengthen, again, th this belief about me finding this girl, right? The magical girl. Another way to build momentum and build more positive self-belief is when I stay within those boundaries. So when I say no to the girl that's just like bullshit, I'm actually, that belief I have about myself is actually going to get strengthened. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. It does take this work, though. You know what I'm saying? It's not just, again, just affirming. Yes, affirming is, is huge. Affirmations are huge. We need to start there. We need to start with, okay, what do I need to believe? Okay, but what are the actions now that I can take to reinforce that belief? I hope you guys are following all this shit. And if you don't, I don't give a fuck because you're stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I think if you do that, you create great boundaries, right? You believe in yourself. Genuinely, we talked about this subconsciously. Um, and you know where you're going. You're going to find what you're looking for. Again, humans are creation machines. Use manifestation. Find the things that you want, right? Visualize those things. Pepper your mind with positive, reaffirming thoughts. Take reaffirming actions. And eventually, you will just become a person that is able to receive that. And just get off the fucking timeline, if there's one thing you take away from all this, get off the fucking timeline. Off. Let it go. Cut that shit out. You will get to your destination whenever you get there. Let it go. And you'll probably get there faster to keep it real. Because then it's really just about the journey. And here's the other thing too. Well, you're saying you want this family and you feel like you're in a rush. What it sounds like to me is you are unhappy with yourself right now. You're telling me you can't be 28 years old, single, and a woman, and want a family and still be 100% fulfilled and happy? I know that we have these outer goals, but that's the catch-22 behind all of this shit. 
which is it's the process that makes us happy. It's actually not the results. Because when you get a person, guess what's going to happen? Trust me, I do this with all my coaches, right? I have coaches that have gone to relationships. There's one coachee I have. She said, we're about to come up on our two-year anniversary. That's fucking wild. I have taken homegirl from situationship to relationship, and now I'm giving her relationship advice versus dating. My whole point is this. The over, overthinking never stops. You think that you get a person and magically, poof, you're happy? No, no. Happiness is a state of mind. It's a process. It's, it's an experience. I, I, you, you get what I'm saying? Just find happiness within your life right now. Find happiness in the process of finding that person. And then once you find that person, have happiness and fulfillment in the process of loving that person and getting to know that person even deeper. But it's all a process and it never stops. So be just as happy in your single life and in these circumstances as out as you are happy when you when you actually have it and when you actually have the relationship think about this i in my life i've manifested this house i've manifested that fucking couch upstairs i've manifested that suv i have things i have material things i've manifested a million followers i've manifested all this shit and guess what i am still here i still have bad bad days I still have bad moments. As I'm trying to say, if you think that you're getting your happiness because you get into a relationship, you're fucked. It's not from that. It's from yourself. It's from the process. That's life in a nutshell, bitch. And you either figure it out or you fucking don't. And if you need a reminder, you fucking listen to the podcast again. And you do it again. And you do it again. And you do it again. And I re- guess what? I read the same books again and again and again. If I want to stay in a positive state of mind, in a flow state of mind, I put the work in. And guess what? That work makes me feel good. It gives me purpose. It gives me energy. Get after it. Fucking get after it. I didn't get to the last question. Maybe I'll move it for the next podcast, but um, I really love you guys a lot. Hopefully this inspired you a little bit. I'm feeling fucking great. And it's time to fucking hit it. It's time to hit it hard. It's time to enjoy and just enjoy the ride. The right things are coming for all of you, me, you, everyone, seriously, but put the work in, take responsibility, get your shit together, let go of the negative emotions, replace them with positive emotions, a positive outlook and start putting the work in and everything is going to fall into place for you. I promise. I fucking promise. All right. I'll talk to you guys really soon.